I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. It's about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. Join movement expert Aaron Alexander as he dives into the minds of the foremost innovative healthcare thinkers and movement masters on their approach to optimal health and wellness. Lion Podcast. Welcome back to Lion Podcast. My name is Aaron Alexander. In today's tremendous episode, I got to have a real superhero in the world of fascia, connective tissue, mind body integration, uh, New York Times best selling author, uh, general overall badass, Miss Sue Hitzman. She is uh, somebody I've been following along with for years, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with the Melt Method. Uh, really important stuff. She's, I, I think she was the first one to start using using softer foam rollers for people so that your body can really sink into that. Now you see them, see them kind of all over the place, but uh, she was the one, the beginning stages of that, uh, starting a, a softer, more yin conversation with working with our connective tissue. So really great. She's super smart. And uh, this conversation, we go deep into a variety of wormholes in relation to how to make your body work better. Here is a little clip. On an emotional and on a psychic level, you you kind of are constantly just rehashing the same thing, and you're really not moving forward. And those are what I call thought viruses. Like we almost start to manifest a mantra in our mind of why we cannot. And thank you so much for tuning in to AlignTherapy.com. If you feel called on there, you can start doing the five-day movement challenge where we break down for you the fundamentals of moving well in any freaking situation. Um, Every moment can be an opportunity to move well uh, if you understand how to do that. We never get that education growing up. This is that education. Get things going. I'll also find the show notes for this and all the episodes. Um... I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks so much for reviews on iTunes. That's tremendous. If you guys leave us a review and read it, we'll send you a a box of something from Organifi. This one came from Savannah Grace. Absolute favorite podcast. Double exclamation point. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it was very kind. I appreciate it. The Island Podcast is by far my favorite podcast. I love how Aaron brings very serious, intelligent information to us in such a chill and fun way. Um, And she goes on. Really awesome. Thank you much, Savannah. Appreciate that. Hit us up on Instagram at Align Podcast. Slip me a DM, and uh, we will send you out a box of something from Organifi. Um, final thing. We are brought to you by our friends over at BioOptimizers. Uh, tremendous probiotic supplement. has every probiotic and enzyme your little heart could desire. I said it with the Organifi stuff, too. I hope that's not getting redundant or a little heart desire. It's legit. It's really high quality stuff. Um, I just ate a few of the little tablets just before doing this and I feel great. Uh, really good stuff. Super high end stuff. I'm, I'm really grateful to be sponsored by this guys. Um, if you go on to p3om.com slash align, uh, you will get yourself 15% off of your purchase. If you don't like the stuff, you can send it back and they'll give you full money back. So no risk on that. So I hope you guys enjoy them probiotics and enzymes. It's important to break that food down. All right, I think we're good to go. I just got back from New York, as I had mentioned. Uh, really great. Talked to book publishers. Hopefully that goes well. You'll be seeing an Align book coming, coming to you in about a year or so. Start cracking on that thing. All right, here we go. Back to the podcast with Sue Hitzman. This one was a little funny, BTW, because it was on her... She was playing it to her audience as well. So... Um, She's like at some point there. She's talking to there's people like calling in and stuff, whatever. Um, really good conversation. If you guys enjoy, here we go. Biggie, biggie, bam. Align podcast. Trust Normalizing it. the frequencies. I'm, I'm always doing this. Do you when say I talk NASA about more it. than three times in any explanation of any product? I'm like, I trust it. It's fine. Okay. Align <laughs> <Just laughs> band. NASA actually Just started resistance band training, so you can you totally. can trust it. Totally, but We're I good. got a, but I got an hour long <laughs> structural integration session, and I feel amazing. You cool. are just a wonderful body worker, and that. it's always great to meet people who like just do um, amazing work. So let's talk about you for a second. Hit me. So you uh, you you do body work. You are. Um, you're an educator, you're a mover, you're a groover, you're a pioneer, you're a shaker. Tell, tell everybody more about you because I have to tell you, I'm just so impressed. I just feel great. It's just so great to get great body work and cool. 
Uh, my hip just feels, I'm sure I'm 5'7", I've grown so much. So. Yeah, so the thing that I'm most excited about is helping people be able to do that themselves, which is like a, a maybe a similar journey that you've yes. had. You know, and so figuring out, so my, my background is, is with coaching people's movement and then manual therapy. So rolfing and organ, you know, visceral manipulation and cranial sacral and just trying to understand any avenue that I can get into the body. Yeah. Um, and then psychology is such a big thing too. That's right. You know, so the thing that's really interesting to me is, is that the physical body is like a representation of how you think and how you feel and your environment and the food that you put into it. And then it pops out as being this shoulder thing or knee thing. You know, sure. so the conversation is always so much bigger than just, you know, just a band thing or just a ball thing. It's, it's also looking what's behind that. What's behind that. Yeah. It's a life thing. I mean, I think yeah. that's where all the like-minded people, I think in our industry comes so nicely together. And you know, like why even Jill Miller would be like, you gotta go hang out with Sue again. Like, make sure you reach out. And when she reached out, I was like, Oh yeah. Like, and even when you said, Oh, we've, we've done a, a podcast guy was like, you know, now I'm kind of remembering that time, which is it was like, like three years ago. Yes. Ago. I think it, it was just ago. after my book came out. I think my book had been out about a year uh, and you had reached out about doing a podcast. And those are always just great ways to get information out to people. But, you know, like I say, I mean, we're all a very like minded group of trying to understand and explore the body. And I have a very similar journey, you know, like doing all of these different programs and trying to figure out, you know, like. What is it that makes the body do this? And, you know, how is emotions and psychology built into every dysfunctional pattern that you find in a body? Yeah. And then how to just kind of work with that person to restore stability, restore balance, restore connection and control. And I think, you know, that's the nice thing about all of the body workers I meet is I think we all have a very similar intention to just help people out because they are stressed out. People are stressed out. Yeah. Yes. I, w I promise at least I, I will, I will, uh, share Aaron's information so that you guys can all kind of like commingle and like each other and all that stuff. Yeah. I Align like podcast. That. If you look up Align podcast anywhere or Aaron Alexander, but Align podcast, that's what most of the Align socials podcast. are under. Yeah. Align podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I was in, so I was in Paris during the Paris bombings a couple, whenever that was three years ago, yeah. two years ago, whenever that, that was, yeah. um, and it was a really fascinating experience because I was doing, I was doing, I was staying at a dance studio and I was doing body work with people. It was kind of like a partial barter or whatever, just a way to support. And I got to see this really distinct, tangible difference from working with people pre the bombing. And then I, I was still doing the same thing, people coming in mm. and you could feel it at a visceral level. There was contraction all throughout, like you could feel like livers, like whoa. Yes. You know, it's just, it's such an interesting thing when you really do start to tangibly feel emotion happen in the body. Like we talk like, Oh, the, like uh, it's right. in the tissues and it's emotion. It's like motion, energy yeah, it's like and using motion. The word energy. Right. Don't use that e -word. But when you, but when you have those situations and you actually feel it's like, Oh my God, you're like, your organs are hard because you're stressed out. Yes. I mean, that's actually my, my journey is very similar to tears. Honestly, you know, when I, in the nineties, I was like, all into neuromuscular therapy and all these, you know, the body's tissues and all of this and thinking, you know, structure and function and what did you do? And then whatever you do the most in the day is what's going to cause you your dysfunctions. And then nine 11 happened and it was yeah. like post-traumatic stress disorder just took on this unbelievably tremendous new meaning to me and working with people who really got sick to yeah. some extent, emotionally, physically, chemically, you know, people breathing in the, the cement and the COPD and the cancer and um, just the emotional trauma of people losing their families is was really shocking to me just what bodies do to... Um, to manage stress, you know, we, we go two different ways. Either the stress response goes up and it's like you keep reliving it in your mind. It's like you can't fall asleep because you kind of almost twitch, you know, like when yeah. something's happened. But for some people, uh, you know, it goes the opposite way where you just become lethargic. Like you can't get out of bed. The stress or the trauma has really affected you. And just on the same two sides of the coin, you know, when we think of trauma, we think of something more like, you know, a bombing or, uh, you know, something specific, but a lot of people are going through trauma all the time. Like they're living in abusive families. They're, yep. um, they're living with people who are 
abusing them and it's a nonstop thing. So trauma and stress, I think today having body workers and like-minded people who are really trying to share that message of, you know, self-care is the best care, baby. Self-care is the best care. The ironic thing, Hi, with, the ironic thing with, with uh, the trauma and the explosions and bombings and all that stuff is that actually ends up bringing people together. Yes. You know, so it's like the most well, your insidious. Your energy gets shared too. Yeah. But Everybody's the, frequency kind of comes into quite a similar state. I have to be right. honest. That's what I experienced. Yeah. yeah. So it's almost like the most insidious is that point where it's like there's enough trauma to be tormenting to your nervous system and your, you know, your, your every energy system in your body, but it's not quite enough for you to have to do something about it. You know, so sometimes having that huge trauma actually ends up giving you that signal like, oh, okay, let's finally take care of things. Most of us live in kind of this like 75% trauma place for your whole life. Yes, yes. It's like you just, I always say like, you know, if I always think of it like a seesaw, right? You got stress and repair. And ideally the stress response and the repair response kind of always kind of come back to some center point. But for some of us, the stress is kind of always there. And so the repair is always a little hypo reflexive, a little hypo on the line. And after a while, your brain kind of thinks that that is the balanced place, is right. the higher stress. But you're right. They aren't over the top. They haven't tipped themselves over. And that is, I mean, you know, like in the Melt Mother book, I talk about the fact that it's what I call sudden chronic pain. It comes down with the same type of vestige of like getting hit by a car, only you just did the same down dog you've done. 20,000 times, only this time your hamstring pops, you know, or, uh, you know, you do the same dance move only this time when you land something really catastrophic happens. And that is that accumulative stress that we, like you say, we kind of are sitting on that 70%. We can kind of manage the stress for long periods of time. And then after a while, not so, so much. Where are you at with the whole emotions in the tissue conversation? I think that our issues do sit in our tissue. I think that our mind, if if we really had to process all of the uh, feelings and sensations, you know, like that we produce, I mean, the same areas where we produce emotions are where we can produce pain. So sometimes pain hijacks it those areas to express itself and pain can, you know, take on a lot of senses. And so I think what happens is our body, uh, is sort of the portal so that the, the, we can cope with the emotional state of how our limbic system and the hippocampus are like kind of, you know, reacting, if you will, to the environment. And I just think that the tissue preserves us so that we can get out alive from whatever the traumatic situation is. I think that the fight, flight, or freeze response is inherently linked to the fascial system's reactivity, the, the way that the tissue can pre-stress and morph and adapt, I think can be altered because of our emotional fixations, our emotional struggles. And I really kind of think a lot of people live in the past and they're just, re- you know, it's history repeating all of their problems today. If you look at their history, there is some sort of a correlation that you can make. And as you start to unravel people, I think it makes them feel better. So yeah. I think emotions and, and tissue are inherently linked. So I think you can separate them. What you, you experience, I'm sure with people in my experience is, is people like you think that you're relaxed in a certain area, but you're not even close to relaxed in that area. Right. You know, so our, our sensation of ourselves and the reality of ourselves is usually a little bit like blurry. Mm -hmm. It's like blurred vision a bit, Mm -hmm. you know, so finding that congruency with actually, you know, Ida Rolf said where you think it is, it ain't, you know, so find that congruency of like, what about where you think it is? It is like, how do do we get closer to that? Well, well, and I also think, you know, like how you're perceiving that, like sometimes I feel like there are some people that you meet who are truly a bit passive aggressive, like the way that they're saying things it has, a, has an implication. So the words that we use sometimes are a very unconscious behavior where we're kind of saying and acting in ways where we don't even realize that that's what we're doing. Um, you know, and again, I think that that has to do with our history. I, I always give this example in my trainings. I say, you know, my dad used to always be like so rough on me that if I went downstairs to ask him if I could do something, I'd be like, dad, kind of no, but I didn't know. But I didn't ask anything. Well, now you're grounded. Now you can think about it. I'd be like, but dad, I didn't even do anything. Now you're grounded for a week. And he would like stick to it. And so as an adult, I would go to my boss and I'd be like, I need a raise and you need to give it to me. And 
why? Is because I'm reliving the past and that authority figure, it might as well be my dad standing in front of me, but it is part of that psychology that you start to process. Welcome to New York City. I yeah, it's I'm good. Sorry. It's a real yeah, thing. It's a real thing. We're going live. Uh, you know, it, it really is like how we react and respond to what's going on today can very much just be a secondary reaction to how we responded to something similar in our past. I mean, that's just an easy thing of psychology. And again, the body patterns itself. Like if you've been attacked in the past and all of a sudden somebody's coming up from behind you, you'll probably, your tissue will probably react and respond the same way. Um, yeah, here's Steven. See, see, he says tissue has the memory trace of all our history, both mentally and physically as it's part of, let's see what else he said. Well, that's so fun. Part of human evolution. Exactly. Right. You know, all the podcasts. And the body, uh, yes, and the body with self-assembly, you know, how tissue, all tissue has a very similar thing. And, and uh, it's funny, Stephen had talked about on his, uh, on his Facebook page about vibration. And, you know, and to me that you have many vibrations in the body. There's many oscillations and vibrations and frequencies that if you can get quiet, you can alter. And that's the beauty of, I think, hands-on body work is that it's another person's energy. Um, and it's an experience, you know, to, uh, trust, to allow, to sense, to feel, and to, you know, give tissue time to adapt because someone else is helping you to facilitate those changes instead of doing it to yourself. So, you know, body work is like just so ungodly and valuable mm. to, I think, tissue memory. And I mean, have you ever had a somato emotional release? Do you know what those are? Tell me more. So like a somato-emotional yes, release. but tell right? me more. <laughs> right. It would be, would be where somebody's working on you, and all of a sudden you, you recall this memory in your past, and sometimes they come through with this like huge fleeting, it's the entire moment yeah. in one flash of a second. And it can then kind of cause a bit of an eruption. You know, like I've worked on people, and all of a sudden they're like, you know, I have this terrible feeling in my gut right now with your hands there. I say, tell me more, right? Yeah. And they'll say... You know, it's like this ache, and I ask them about their mother or something, and I'd say, you know, it seems to me that maybe your mother was eating your, your guts alive, you know, like she was so needy of you. It's like, yeah, and just, you just start to cry over it. To me, those are the emotions being let loose, and that is, I think, what happens in tissue is not only do we sometimes have an emotional reaction, we can have a mental, a very... Um, uh, analytic uh, emotion of the moment. But what I think the tissue does is it recalls that information back to your brain because you're at an age and a time in your life where your body can it. process it, right? And I think as a kid, we probably stuff a lot of junk into our tissues. I mean, I know I did. I used to scream in a pillow because my dad sometimes, I'd go up in my room and just scream. I was so mad. Uh, but I never got my voice heard. So I was wondering, you know, as an adult, is that one of the reasons why I have kind of that raspier voice is I was just screaming to get my voice heard. And, um, you know, why did I have a hearing loss when I was a kid? I was like, maybe my body was trying to deafen what I was feeling and hearing. You yeah. know? So I think our bodies are an amazing treasure to learn to tap into and treat. Do you feel. see the, the Wild Wild West or however it's called, the Rajneesh Osho oh, yeah. documentary thing? That I hear, I have not seen it. Oh, no, you got to check it out. Yes, I will. It's good. I will. I have a couple of them that I want to see. It's um, important. Did you guys see Heal? Heal. H E A L. H E A L. Is that how you spell Heel. it? Heal. Yeah, no. H E A L, yeah. Not sure. Another, another incredible documentary. I had a, a, a point to the. Oh, yeah, the so anyway. Well. <laughs> sorry. Wow, well, well, Have you say. seen uh, Shawshank Redemption? Um, so with the wild, wild <laughs> perfect. Like at least there's great times. parts we could reference in there. Um, but so in the wild west, one of the things they get into with the old Rajneesh Osho commune stuff in Oregon uh, was they would go through these kind of like yogic, meditative, kind of uh, cathartic practices where they'd start off and like dancing and then screaming and then they'd like it would go so far where people would like start hitting each other and it'd be like a mosh pit almost. Oh. And then you go into silence. It wasn't like a, a, like mandatory. They have to give people black eyes, yeah. but that would happen. Like people would actually have, from what I saw in the documentary, I was never there. Um, but I wonder with that, sometimes it's like just going into this catharsis and exploding and ripping your skin off, but not actually finding reason and kind of coming to, into communion with like, that's the big thing is being able, having the resources to find a reason or feel, feel at peace with what happened as opposed to just keep on invoking it. Oh. And crying and flipping out. 
Oh, yeah, because that happens all the time. I mean, sometimes people get, I always say you kind of get stuck in a rut where on an emotional and on a psychic level, you you kind of are constantly just rehashing the same thing and you're really not moving forward. And those are what I call thought viruses. Like we almost start to manifest a mantra in our mind of why we cannot, like, you know, like Yoda is like, no, can't, just only do. They just can't do their do. It's all, I can't, I can't, I can't. And, and. And this, you know, thing that's happening to me, it becomes kind of a, um, an energy of just such woe and victimization. And some of it is like, it's, there's a reason for that. Like, you know, don't dismiss that. That's a serious thing that this person is experiencing. Um, but oftentimes in their speaking about it, it just keeps them in like what I would consider like a, a, a feedback loop where they just keep going through it and they never yeah. just walk through because they're always just trying to get something to like, you know, heal them. I I've had people who just think, look, I just want you to fix this. If you can't fix this in a day, like you're not the right therapist. And I think to myself, w- are there wings on my back that I didn't see? Like, is there a halo on my head? And and why is it that you can go to a doctor and a doctor gives you pills that take at least six months to actually settle in and work for you? Yeah. And, and a body worker has to like, you know, cure you of some sort of a thing in a day. I just think to myself, no, no way. Um, so I see Elise says, I'm in such agreement with everything you're both sharing, stories of my life, working through it. Yes, and that's what we're all doing is we're working through it. And so hopefully you get to work through it. So how does one together. find that differentiation between just reliving something or rehashing it over and over again and actually finding communion and being able to move forward from it? I would <laughs> say I would take, and this is, I'm going to, I'm going to quote Elaine de Beauport, who was an amazing practitioner and just such an enlightened woman. She said to me once, um, the question that people need to ask themselves when they're feeling uh, you know, stuck is, is to finish the sentence. What I'm really wanting is mm. what I'm really wanting is. And a lot of people would be like, I don't know. And I say, well, there it is. So let's talk about, is it okay that you don't know right now? You know, like, can you be more okay with where you are right now and, and realize that you don't have all the answers and that's okay. And it actually makes sense while you don't. So mm. you're not trying to change the, the, uh, the, 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 the person you're, you're trying to change the mindset about their circumstance. Right. And so it's not about, and it's funny, my husband said last night, you know, it's not about the comparing people to people that's going to make you better worse. Well, he's this and I should that, but it's more about forming your own identity and being able to identify with other people, but to craft and hone in on your own identity. And I think we have sometimes a hard time knowing who we are and what we want to be. And, you know, we all have these expectations and now social media is like, you know, how many likes did I get? And I don't give a crap, you know, like I just, I think that again, it's how people are managing their lifestyles today that is causing us to, again, on that emotional level, lose our connection with ourselves and to become, um, in unable to answer the question, what I'm really wanting is and then to do the actions that actually get you what you want because i think oftentimes we do actions that actually don't get us what we want yeah it actually gets you more into the pool hole is what it does yeah <laughs> kind of drives you down instead of lifts you up yeah and right. i think that's what a lot of people do i, I mean just, what's your take on that on i don't even remember what the question was anymore. you know what what is it that, that gets people <laughs> stuck what is it that happens like when people get stuck uh, you know, what, what is it like? Why do you think that that is? Uh, I think that you need to have your environment has to grow externally as well, as well as internally. Mm-hmm. And so people in like, so I live in, in LA where a lot of people are into like doing ayahuasca and, you know, going to Peru and having various different, which I'm in support of whatever your path is. I think it's great. But oftentimes people end up repeating over and over again and not actually doing the internal and external work that it needs to facilitate that new change. You know, so you need yeah. to, you need to treat your vessel. This is like a, you know, it's like a, it's like a, a vessel that's holding the spirit and holding the, you know, all the fluids and all the everything, but you have to fortify the vessel, you know? So if you're just sitting around like eating potato chips and not actually fortifying this, this ship that you travel through the world with, um, I don't have as much, 
I shouldn't say I have, I have sympathy, actually, because that's like another conversation of why that's, you don't have that seed to want to go. Right. But you well, need to fortify again, all like, the vessels. Absolutely. And your relationships. But I think and your that, business. Yeah, and your home. I think you're saying it, though. Yes, your, your energy, right? The yeah. energy around you is definitely going to shape and mold how you navigate in the world. And we, I mean, I have to tell you how many times I have people who come to see me, and they're just stressed out. They hate their job. They don't like the direction that their lives are going. They're... I always say, like, I'll say, you know, you seem a little angry. And they'll be like, I'm not angry. And I'd be like, I, or they go, I'm just frustrated. I wasn't angry. I'm not angry. No, I'm angry. I, I'm, just, I'm just frustrated. And I'm like, well, frustration is like anger in a tuxedo. You yeah. know, I mean, it, it sounds nicer, but it's still you're angry is what you are. Yeah. And, um, you know, that is like, again, it's a, it's a part of uh, your environment that if you live in an environment where the, you know, your mom and dad are eating macaroni and cheese and you're eating french fries and fried chicken and you know you're you're down in the south you're gonna eat what's around you and you're gonna eat in volumes that oftentimes what the parents are doing is they're feeding the kids the same size plate as what they're eating and it just becomes a part of awareness and understanding and uh you know i don't want to call it ignorance because it's not that they're ignorant they haven't been taught anything so it's not like they've been taught and then they're just saying no they just don't really have the capacity the understanding of like how to make their lives better and i always hear people make the argument well to eat really good food you got to spend way more money it cost me $4.99 to feed my entire family chicken wings from McDonald's and hamburgers and french fries than it does to you know get organic food and go to the market and select which uh, fabulous uh, lettuce head is the one that I'm going to nourish my family with they just want to shut their kids up put them in a sugar coma and get them to bed in three hours and that's America I mean we are inundated with big pharma and with you know ads on television that are warping people's minds over what really is health and how it is that you know wellness occurs and then you know like there's dudes like him who walk in my office with like you know an epic body who's like you know no fat on his (laughs) system super muscular and fit super flexible dancer body you know like you're like the one in in a hundred have your system and the people that do that i see on facebook you know they're doing all these beautiful poses and you know they have this fluidity but we're in a small percentage over what is happening outside of the world. Um, I mean, or like my, I'm calling it like longevity fitness, my world, you know, um, it really is about just putting people together, doing things for the right reason, having love and happiness in your life and doing what you love to do and finding something that really gives you joy yeah. and happiness. And I think that that, I think that that will make you move better. I think it, I think, you know, what I'm really wanting is a good question. And are you doing things that give you happiness and joy? Are you around people that lift you up and make yeah. you feel like you're important? And if you don't, you should Come over and hang out with us because, like, we're full of it. Doing it. I think faith is a big thing. Yes. So, like, faith is, easy, like, in religion and all that stuff. I was reading, oh, I don't remember what it was, but differentiating the difference between faith and religion. And religion is kind of like the rules and the dogma on top of it, but then faith is kind of that seed underneath. Mm-hmm. You know, and so faith, you can have faith in your nutrition. You need to have faith in nutrition and faith in, like I said, feng shui, like the way that you hold your home, you know, the I relationships. I have faith in my body. Like anytime I hurt myself or something isn't right, I have faith that my body is trying to tell me something, yeah. and that there's a reason. And I think I'm probably one of the few, and probably as are you, that actually goes after that process of, of listening and tuning into it and doing things specifically for it you know, to be more a part of you so that it doesn't hurt you, yeah. you know, rather than trying to eradicate everything, everybody's trying to abolish things, annihilate everybody's from the negative. I just kind of feel like I want to be more centered. I want to have more effortlessness in my control. I want to have better connections with people. Um, I like when people make eye contact. It's very enjoyable. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, you know, I but so the, but so the faith like things relevant, all these non-religious things, everything, everything. can be related. Nutrition's like really religious for a lot of people, yes. but it's faith because when you put food into your face or when you have a relationship or whatever it is, relationships are a little bit faster. Um, but you don't necessarily see all the differences cause it has to process. 
you know, so yeah. we want this really like immediate change with things, but even you food changing takes time to digest everything. Yeah. So when you're, you know, it's like, it's like when, like I'm really into hot yoga, you oh, know, yeah. but I don't ever drink water when I do hot yoga. Cause I'm like, if I'm dehydrated, I'm dehydrated. Right. Like the water that goes onto my face right now, like it's not having that much of an impact, you know, placebo, it's going to affect me in that sense of like, Oh, I feel more hydrated, but, but you're also not doing a, a three hour class or anything. What is it? An hour? Um, up to, up to like two hours is like a lot. So I'll do like two classes back to back. I'll so drink you, water between them, you will. but I don't do that all the time. I see. But it's like, yeah, I mean, like two and a half hours would be like a I'm long, a, a long I'm time. I'm a water doing sipper. It. I always give that as a very sound piece of advice. People always ask me, how much water <laughs> should I drink? And I'm like, I don't know. I you like know, the struggle. I like going it. into like challenge. Like I, I like to, I like to prepare the body, like prepare the vessel. At some point you're not going to have water to sip, you know? And, but then it also what depends on what life. Well, yeah, it could be a metaphor, but I mean, literally. I'm always going to have my <laughs> It's always water bottle. Bottle. I've never not had an algae bottle Don't beside me. I think I would ever leave you anywhere. <laughs> I know I've left you in Ugh. bathrooms, and I, I'm down to my last, my last happy bottle, but shh. <laughs> Sorry. Sue's not crazy. She's Wait a minute, like completely I need to, sane. So first of all, She's Amanda like Sizzik is on. I had mentioned heel just a little bit about the diets and the mindset. <laughs> totally, it is brilliant. Um, Amanda also says that, uh, oh yeah, Dr. Hyman's documentary is Broken Bane, a Brain All on the Gut Connections. Very helpful. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that, you know, this has been a time uh, of, you know, very sad to hear like Anthony Bourdain and, you know, people committing suicide. And I didn't even know that he did that. Oh. Jesus. Sorry. He's like one of my favorite people in the world. I'm sorry. He hung oh. himself the other day. It's kind of very sad. The smartest people. It seems like the most compassionate. It seems like the people that go deepest into that, like the, the seed part. Yes. Oftentimes end up kind of Have you ever control. worked with anyone with bipolar disorder or, or emotional disorders? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, again, I've been in the industry a long time and I have worked on so many disorders and diseases and I happen to have very intimate firsthand learning about bipolar disorder because of my mother. I've been pretty candid about it. I've written blogs on it. And after this last, um, you know, episode with, uh, uh, you know, is it Tori Birch that uh, also uh, did a suicide just recently? And, oh. you know, these are things like that you hear and it just, it's heartbreaking because you're right. They're like the highest, most intelligent people. I always say, my mother is sharp as a tack. She's so brilliant. She's so on point. But then sometimes her brain just derails and she has these delusions of grandeur. And then in the next instance, she can't leave her house. Yeah. And it's really hard to watch it, but it's also really hard to try to explain to people that like being depressed is different than clinical depression. Having mood right. swings is different than having bipolar disorder. So what's the difference? It really, I think, has to do with... Um, chemicals and reaction and um, brain function, uh, how neurotransmitters are being adapted. And I think that the real uh, perplexity about depression and bipolar or any type of emotional things is just like I said, is that there's no centers of the brain that are 100% exclusive to particular emotions. In fact, right. you know, the limbic system, the hippocampus, uh, you know, even the way that our thalamus regulates and it, it's all part of the same process of just balance and stability. And I think that, you know, when you get just depressed, I think there's like, you can identify a real thing that's, that's gotten you bumped out. You, you broke up with your boyfriend, somebody yelled at you, yep. you lost your iPod and you know, like, you just saved up all that money for it. And then it was gone. It's like, you get bummed out at like, you're, you know, feel stupid. We all like human bash ourselves. I, I suck. I can't believe it. But hopefully those moments come, you process it, and then and then you kind of come back to your normal self. When you have clinical depression, sometimes there's just no reason for it. It's just all of a sudden you like you're not sleeping right, and then you just you can't make a choice. You don't know if you want toast or do you want coffee. I don't know. Whatever yeah. you're getting, like you just can't make a decision, and and it's it's so hard for people to recognize like how so much of that has to do with how in our past we have been able to express ourselves and in how our tissue has found and sensed and felt joy and love and happiness and you know I always say I've seen miracles I've seen miracles I've been very blessed as a practitioner to be a part of miracles. Um, 
to I've I've just seen miraculous things right before my eyes that I just you know it's like watching a person do a magic act it's just unreal wanted to take a quick break and thank our sponsor Organifi for supporting the show. Organifi is a rad company. I utilize their superfood blends on a daily basis. Um, holding in my hands the green juice right now filled with all the green powders your little heart could desire from uh, wheatgrass to spirulina to chlorella to matcha. Really excellent stuff. Highly recommend checking them out. They also do protein blends that are vegan as far as I can see. So the protein they're using in here is pea protein, quinoa protein, and pumpkin seed protein. Everything's organic. Everything's delicious. Highly recommend checking them out. So go Organifi, O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com and utilize the Align code for 20% off. Organifi.com, Align code, A-L-I-G-N, 20% off. Get that stuff. Thank you guys so much for tuning in back to the show. Pow. Do you ever get random moments of... of uh... Like life is, is, is so finite and we're like, we're so fragile. Like at any time you could just end it. <laughs> yeah. Like almost any time I'm close to any edge of anything, I'm like, I could just turn it off right now. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't yet. You know, I don't think I'm going to in this lifetime, but it's, it's like, I uh, not. don't do that. If ever you feel it. like you're going to jump off an edge, I'll call you up. I, I have Send you have text. me on my cell. I just want you to call me first and I'll talk <laughs> you off the ledge for sure. And that's what we need. Like, do you have somebody who actually is talking it through? And I think the thing that we're learn we learn to do in America also, I don't know, maybe this is also culturally, um, um, is when somebody tells you that, you know, like, oh, I'm feeling bad. Oh, don't feel bad. That stuff happens to me. You know, right. it's okay. And sometimes, you know, doing that is the, per the person who's saying that to you is, is, is instantly relating to you and, and saying something to you that probably somebody has said to them instead of how you even would say, you know, is tell me more, like what, what's right. happened and to become an investigator and to allow people time to process their thoughts and realize that sometimes people say things like, and this happens to me in my practice is they'll say something and I'll say, so if I'm hearing you right, I'm just going to say this back to you is, you know, whatever it is. And they'll be like, God, when you say it back to me, it just sounds terrible. And I said, right. yeah, it sounds terrible. So is it, could it be okay that you feel so terrible? Because actually that sounds like a terrible predicament you're in. Yeah. And so again, you're changing the mind about the way that you're doing things. We 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 get to feel so bad about you know what our choices are. And then again, we have other people telling us to not feel bad, which kind of doesn't really help us out when what we really need to do is express more of why we feel that way. And I think that's the problem is we are not talking about how um, stress really does hurt people. Yeah, the fancy people. the fancy psychological term, I think, is calling it, it's a double bind. Yes. You know, so you're in that place where it's like the shame of your shame or the yeah. shame of like, oh, I'm, I'm lo I lost the game or I'm, I'm feeling a certain way that's not socially acceptable. It so then it ends, ends, ends up getting, yeah, it ends up actually getting darker. I hate letting people down. And so if we can, if we can embrace all those different little shadowy parts of ourselves, that's like when we're doing uh, body work stuff. You know, so whenever I'm working, now you're sitting on the floor before you were talking, talking smack. I know. I just can't cross God, my legs dang. one more time. It's like I cross, the, I put my feet down. I cross, I put my feet down. I'm not the upcoming, upcoming Libro is all about how this is really beneficial for you amongst other, other things. I can only just do this for so long and then I feel like I can't believe you, that you shat upon sitting on the floor. I didn't. I didn't. We Jesus. were going to, but he wanted, he wanted the skeletal and the muscular stuff in the background. I'm I said, floor, we can't I'm sit on the sitter. ground and have those because I am I don't a have... floor sitter. Anyway, did you know Tell me. that folks in Northern Africa, Eastern Mediterranean, Southeast Asia have significantly less, this is very regurgitory, have significantly less incidences of osteoarthritis and, and any form of hip disease. Of course. Right. There's not an olive oil conversation around that as well, like eating good fats and whatnot, because that's where a lot of olive oil comes from, not yes. Southeast Asia. Yes. Um, but just being on the floor. You know, like there's all these really high leverage things that we can do to change the whole composition of our life oh. that we just don't give enough credit to because it's like little kid shit. Y yes, like get down on the floor and freaking crawl every once in a while. Isn't that a freaking shocker? Hands and knees? <laughs> Sounds kind of kinky, but it's a really good pose to get into. All fours, you know? What about hands on the ground in relation to making your brain feel better? You got any, any thoughts on that? I love it. I actually think putting your hands to the earth is important. I mean, I think that grounding is very real. Um, you know, walking on grass, walking on real terrain. Yep. I think that America is not doing that. And again, we have so much disassociation, and there's like such a weird vibe now with like Mr. Nutbag in the <laughs> office of our 
our presidency. Sometimes I'm like, wow. Well, I heard he wants to legalize weed though. So I'm like, oh, all right. God. I think I like you know him what? all legalize of a sudden. It's the first marijuana. time like Trump's all right. I think he likes thank weed. Thank God for it's that. Good. You know, the C- I have to tell you, the <laughs> CBD oil research is just. We need more funding in CBD. We need yeah. more funding, and we need to test that stuff. And the problem is, is that the government is going to get their hands on it. And they're going to want their hands on it. And then they're going to control the whole thing, and it's just going to always be a problem to give people what I think would really be. Uh, um, epic care. We we the FDA cuts things off that I think could in fact very much help way more people, and I think CBD is definitely one of them. You know, I think THC also. THC I think the psychoactive part. Absolutely, we, I think the psychoactive part is great. I I, I, I advocate weed over alcohol a yeah. hundred and fifty thousand times over. Yeah, I think having some opportunity of having, like they call it like a trip, right? Like weed, less people would call that a trip, but I think it's a trip too. Yeah. You know, and so like everybody knows the effects of when you go to Bermuda or Bali or whatever for 10 days and all of a sudden you kind of have this like, you get this perspective change. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, I was so wrapped up in that tunnel and all the things I thought were important aren't that important at all and I was such a dick to my boyfriend. Whatever. That's people who actually get to go to Bali. <laughs> for the rest of us who don't, you get to go I, to I'm already with you. Ocean no, so. City, Maryland, whatever. <laughs> I wish I could go through a tunnel or something. But so you go on this trip and what it does is it kind of creates this opportunity for a pattern reset. You know, so we have access to all these pattern resets all the time. It's called yoga. It's called dance. It's called sex. It's called laughter. It's called fucking base jumping, whatever, whatever you do. It's called melt specifically. Um, but also something, so there's a a book recently out from, from friends of mine called stealing fire. Uh So Jamie wheel and Stephen Collar. Have you read this one? No. Oh, yes. It's important. Are you going to send it to me? Oh yeah, sure. Email me, yeah, or okay. you could just buy it for me. And send it that I'll way buy you the book. But... Yeah, perfect. Um, but within that book, it gets into the value that these psychoactive, kind of like taboo substances, the value that they've had for millennia. You know, potentially to get us to where we are. Huh. You know, so like there's the stone ape theory, which gets into are you familiar with this. No. Oh I, god. I like the stone ape theory. theory. That just sounds like oh, I want to be in the stone ape theory. theory. <laughs> I don't uh, that theory. So essentially, when we are, I'm not an expert in this. Uh, nor I am with most things I talk about, so it's fine. Uh, but the stone date theory, it's essentially it's primates. You know, if we if we came from from those those fellows, monkeys, you m- can monkeys say. and such, yeah, um, stumbling upon psychedelics, so stumbling upon mushrooms and various oh, yeah. different psychedelics. People the woods. have been trying to get themselves high for centuries. I mean, it's still happening. Of, All it's the still animals, happening. A lot of the animals. I mean, even when you think of like a uh, shaman. I mean, shaman were like you know making you drink some sort of a thing so that you hallucinate and realize what your life path is. I mean. Yeah. I want to take some of that, but they I used to know. do it themselves, actually. Yes. So back in the day, it was the shaman that would take the thing, so that it would be more porous and open, to actually being Crazy. able to see what's happening within you. Now it's like, okay, now it's like maybe we all need to kind of share some of the shaman stuff. Yes, Shit's and crazy. I mean, I mean, I think that again, I think that spirit and soul and energy, you know, pass through the particles. I, you know, I, I mean, honestly, like I have worked with this guy Thomas John, who uh, is a, I don't know, maybe he's like empathic and he can sense and feel uh, spirits around you and things like that. You know, I'm like, okay, whatever. But when people like that can call out people's names and where they're from and, yeah. and great grandmothers names and all these other things where you're like, okay, I mean, somebody would have had to have been like, I don't know, scoping me out and knowing what my name was. And so you do it in this very obscure way. And he still like nails it. How does that happen? I think that we have a hard time at the metaphysical sense of, uh, of our being and the vibration again in frequencies that we have in the collagen. The collagen is mm. uh, like an electro transmitter. It's a conductor. Yeah. Uh, collagen is a is a electro neurochemical conductor. Uh, and with water, it binds. And uh, with all of the uh, ex- ground substances that fibroblasts proliferate, you know, like they're making collagen and elastin and these things called uh, glycoaminoglycans and proteoglycans. I'm getting really fancy here. Right. The, gl- the glue that attracts the water into that matrix and makes this beautiful multi microvacular system. Microvacular system. It is, right? So, 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 so a tissue like a sponge, like that can morph and adapt, like it has little cells that can open and expand or yep. shrink back down to absorb and move and pump water through 
through its matrix. Uh, and it's a very sensory system. I mean, Robert's life kind of coined it as the largest sensory organ. And we think, well, the skin is. And it's like, well, superficial fascia is adhered to the back of the skin. So it's kind of one thing yeah. uh, that is separate. And Gil Headley, who has now done dissections where he's taken the superficial fascia and put it in kind of like a bath salt solution and like started to right. massage the fat out of the, the tissue and just leaning being the honeycomb uh, uh, fascial anatomy behind, it really gives you a new perspective of just how powerful fascia is on, to me, a metaphysical, on a neurochemical, on a, on, on a, on an emotional level. It, it is really a vessel. It's a system of stability. And I mean that it, it will do what it needs to do to try to keep our structure, our mind, our, our being stable. I think it's one of its primary jobs. So what's, how does one care for fascia? Which I think it's, it's just as religious and dogmatic to just to isolate and reduce down fascia or nervous system or muscles or yeah. any of that. Like I think we'll probably, Tom Myers talks about this too. Like we'll get to a point where like, okay, cool. We've moved past fascia and we can get hot and bothered about another system that we've let go of in the past? I guess that the thing is, is you can't let go of the other systems. Like I always say, melt, is, everybody sees melt. First of all, they think it's a uh, like myofascial release technique. And I'm like, all actually, right. it's not about myofascia. It's not about the muscle layer. I, my whole program is, is actually saying you can adapt your sensory nervous system. You can actually help better sensory responsiveness just by stimulating connective tissue and giving the sensory nerve endings a better environment to live in. I know that this works because that's what I do with people. Yeah. And it instantly helps the nervous system reorganize. And to me, you know, the, the neuro myo uh, circulatory skeletal system that we all have in our bodies, it's all connected. Yeah. Each, pe each thing is separate, but each thing is working together to keep us alive and to, um, I think, function efficiently. I think we are the cause of our dysfunctions, not our bodies. And again, like with fascia, I just think that it's a really, you know, how do you care for it was the question, is I think, you know, I'll go to the very basic. I think it's happiness. I think energetically. Mm. I think your joy keeps your keeps yeah. happy fascia. Uh, I sure. think, um, you know, movement is of the utmost importance. And I think understanding the, the, the tissue is a three-dimensional fluid-based matrix and how to treat the global system before you go into parts and piecemeal. But how do you get the whole system to kind of like a spider's web getting vibration through it that all of the tissue or the entire continuum gets to get a little wake-up call and just make it that at the beginning and just see what your body does with it. Before you go tinkering, just get a nice global process of fluid flow in the tissue and again that's what melt is really that's really all it's about the the first level of melt that i teach everybody is just you know get your fluid moving and sense and feel how fluid changes can actually alter structural neurological physical emotional and mental changes it can it can help you and then you start to incorporate the more mindful practices whether it's you know, yoga or a line or, or um, yoga tune-up or um, uh, structural integration, manual therapy. Melt. Um, me no, like melt to me is to me, I just think like, again, just basic awareness and just juice up the tissue. Hmm. Just again, that's that I think is the foundation. I think that um, that's all the this piece of it is, is just finding awareness through a cellular system. Get down and dirty with your cells and then start focusing on the structures that you're familiar with, like the muscles and the bones. I think that we just put the carpet before the horse. We, we focus on muscles and bones. Uh, we get obsessed over our alignment, uh, over our posture. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I must be... The, is Puts it, a rigid, is it here? Is it rigid here? layer is it on is top. Exactly, yeah. Like, yeah. Do I have to sit like, this is this what I need to do? And I'm like, are you working for it? Yes, yeah, stop working for it. Ugh. I think right. that's probably your better place is wherever your body sits at rest. Be honest first and build from there. Yeah. Be, 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 be grounded first. Just come back into your body. You got to go into your body to get something out of it. You cannot live out in the clouds and out in the environment around you. You got to come into your system. I think that's what, again, that's why I feel so very privileged to constantly meet people like you and all the other people in our community is just that there is such a like-minded synergy of curiosity and exploration and it's not about being able to go aha 
Like there's the one thing that's going to fix everything because there just isn't. There's a million ways to modify. There's a million similarities in techniques. I just think it's whatever resonates with you is I think probably what you should listen to more and try to do. And if it makes you feel good and it benefits your life and it brings you joy, I think you should do more of that. And the stuff that makes you feel like shit and makes you angry or makes you feel sad or makes you feel stuck. I don't think you should do that. I think you should do the other stuff. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the. I think that's like the, the mission the, of life. Then the irony is some of that stuff. It's it's kind of like the explosion thing. The deeper we can go into that, sometimes that actually is what elucidates that the message that she the needed. Epiphany. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, um, cellulite. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, this is going to be the last topic we're going to talk about, and I'm so excited that that word just came up. I didn't do it, but listen, next month, oh God. I'm actually doing what I call my Summer Cellulite Series. I have been hearing a lot of people really coming from a negative side of cellulite. We're going to they, talk about it. They, they don't want to talk about it, or if they do, they're talking about smashing it, annihilating it, blasting it out of your body like you're going to, and I love, again, Gil Headley says, you, you, you can you can eliminate fat, or you can eliminate cellulite like you can eliminate your femur. Right. Okay. You know, look, so, so anyway, so cellulite, so next month, in the middle of next month, we're going to do a three week, it's a private Facebook page, and um, men and women can come and learn about I think that this is what we need to do. Create a better relationship with our cellulite and stop making it the bad part of our body and to mm. stop shaming that aspect, but to understand what it is, to understand the different grades of cellulite. What are the different grades? Like, what is a zero grade of cellulite? What is a three grade of cellulite? Like, do you know what they are and why they occur? And so I want to share that with everybody and actually to understand what, what cellulite is, how it occurs, and then to touch it and to learn about it and give people an opportunity to just give back so that we like our bodies more. I how do you think. define it? Cellulite? Yeah. Uh, to me, cellulite is, I mean, on a, on a, connective tissue level it is the superficial fascia has become somewhat damaged uh, through t unnecessary tension and compression forces that are not only caused by physiological changes like sitting in a chair causing a breakdown of you know like sitting on a sponge and squeezing out all the fluid and not letting those tissues have their resilience but that then further allows unnecessary adipose fat to accumulate and collect in connective tissue and very similar to like getting gum stuck in your hair mm. or putting dough in a mesh bag after a while the dough kind of seeps out and as it does it's pulling it's causing tension on the collagen and when collagen doesn't have its water in it if it gets pulled too hard it just kind of collapses the fibular architecture flattens out like you're pinching a straw and that causes what I would call local adhesions and deformation in the superficial fascia and it's just a, a, a kind of a a lack of fluid flow, oxygen, it's a, it's a, it's a circulatory issue uh, to try to bring blood flow and fluid flow back to the uh, layers of our body uh, that are just under our skin. So cellulite is a circulatory uh, uh, cellular uh, uh, dysfunction. Mm. Uh, it's, it's a damage to things that can actually be repaired. Are you suggesting that sitting on the floor might be beneficial for... The yes, I think I think just movement in general is important. I think yes, that we sit on our butt way too long. You know, I think that even you know we've been here for at least over how long have we been talking? How long has it been? We've been if talking we sat for on the about floor. 52 minutes. Oh, God. And about one hour is like plenty. I mean, I feel like every half an hour you should stand up, reach for the sky, take some breaths in and out, get My your ass circulation. Fell asleep up. I know, seriously. Ago, like, it's like I can't really sit anymore. It's I'm very just rare. Sick and tired. I know. Well, you just got to cross your legs up. You know, if you cross your legs up, you start setting yourself up for, for success for most any type of like Olympic lifting or weightlifting movement. You know, so you're starting that relationship. And I'd love to like hear your feedback you on mean it. like on rotation and bring yeah the you're starting so most of us right. we end up kind of falling into this valgus knee like the knees dropping in yes. and a lot of people have like the pronated foot which we villainize these things like your foot needs to pronate your knees right. need to be able to do the valgus motion you know so there's no good bad it's just something that we do an excessive amount you know so it's like you started out vitamin d perfect now you ate, ate like eight thousand grams of vitamin right. d and it's a problem right you know so we've done eight thousand grams of this kind of collapse hyperkyphotic position and right. now it's a real issue you know so something like a sukhasana crossing your legs up on the floor is kind of like 
you know, it's, it's like the other side of that. And if you prop your butt up and you're on the front edge of the sit bones, right. now you're really starting to give yourself vitamin, whatever's the reciprocal of that. I think that's all. Please I mean, I disagree. Think, no. Yes. No, 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 I'm not going to disagree with mm. that one at all. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually would say that that's the crazy thing about fascia is fascia is designed to manage tension and compression uh, so that we function efficiently. And so if you sit in just what you're saying, that kyphotic kind of posture with your knees kind of rotated inward and you know how most people do with their toes up on the floor, on the, on the legs of the chair, you know, like without their feet, not on the floor, right. shorten that back line. You, the tissue is going to get really, really good at keeping your head carriage forward and having you not move from that position for long periods of time. Yep. The problem is you want to get up and move around. Your body's like, oh, my God, I don't remember what that is. I, I got to sit back <laughs> down. I'm, I just aged about 85 years. Right. You turn into an old person when you get up. And I, I think it's funny. My, my friend Liz Cook, who is uh, she she wrote the SOAS book and, you know, really into she calls it the filet mignon of the body. Yeah. Big shout out to Liz. Um, it's she, a filet mignon of, of a cow. Well, it's like it's like I a thought. tongue. It's like a receptor. It's like the no. I'm saying like our psoas is sort of this filet mignon of our bodies. It's like the supple receptor region of our body. And the thing is, when you sit for long periods of time, then you get up and you try to move around, and that that tissue just becomes less resilient. It loses its elastic property, its ability to move and adapt, and then return to an ideal shape. Mm. And so she'll say, you know, and, and, well, maybe I embellish this. I say, you know, people always talk about their psoas being too long too tight too weak too short and what Liz will say is you know what your psoas is it's freaking exhausted it's so sick and tired of you blaming it for all your problems it's trying right. to help you out uh, it's trying to make you efficient but if you don't like how you say do movements that are a little bit out of your comfort zone sit in positions that actually forced you in some ways to come more upright might be a good idea every once in a while it might be nice to just change from your habits you know uh, uh, I think that's a just Gestures become habits, habits become movement, movement becomes form and function. I mean, that's just like the process that it goes. Mm. So you do a gesture enough times, you, you that becomes a habit. You have a habit enough time that's going to alter your function, your shape, and your movement. You're going to shape yourself because of the habits. Some habits are great. Some habits are... But eventually the habit becomes a prison. Is. It becomes a rut. It becomes something you can't get out of. But you can get yeah. out of it. You just don't know how to get out of it. You don't have the resources well, for it. That's it. Your world gets awfully small when you when you lose the opportunity to change. Yeah. Right. Change is really the secret of a good, healthy life. I think is always being able to, you know, go with the flow if that's how the wind blows. You know, if somebody suddenly said, "Hey, you want to go to a Yankees game?" Then you'd be like, "Hell yeah!" Their seats way up at the top. No problem. I'll walk up all those stairs. This is awesome. I haven't been to a Yankees game in ten years. You know, and you just do. It. If I said that to my mom, she'd be like, "Oh, I don't think so." <laughs> Right. I'm not going to climb upstairs. Oh, no. That's yeah. the prison. Yeah, that's you, prison. It gets, you it gets prison slippery and slippery. It's like quicksand. What an awful thing it is to be trapped in a body that doesn't want to move the way that you just desire to move. And again, I think you said it right at the top of the hours, you know, being connected with ourselves and moving our bodies in a way that kind of gets your joints pliable and you become more aware. I think awareness is 80% of the trouble of people's movements is that they just don't realize how their body has gotten to that place. And as you start to explain it to them and you show them how they're not perhaps moving as well as they could, uh, things change. You know, people change. People can change. You, know, you, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, I have to say. You really can change your your destiny by tapping into yourself and learning that every person has a specialness and I think it's our job to f find it. Hmm. I, it. I think we should wrap up. Such Woo! a freaking pleasure. <laughs> I feel like somebody just gave me a birthday present. My birthday, my birthday's not even until November. Good. Happy Good. birthday to me. Perfect. Actually, next week is my three-year anniversary. So this was kind of like an anniversary gift. To, so thank you for bringing a little extra joy into my of course. Uh, whole week. This is wonderful. I said I was dealing with a little bit of lazy, greasy, stupid this, this whole week. And so this has already kind of shifted my perspective. Mm. Week. Hump day. I like it. Thanks. Hump day. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. I so appreciate your uh, notes. And I'll be looking at those and commenting later. And um, happy melting. And good luck with your book and uh with the align podcast and line podcast and so this is going to be on line podcast, align therapy.com with aaron alexander two a's and i will put his info up above and yeah. uh, i just think you're freaking great and oh, one yeah. more time thank you jill miller thank
Thanks, Jilly, for for bringing your pal over. Yeah, I love that Jill's kid. So, big love to everybody. Pow. Happy melting. That was fun. That was a good one. That was a good one. Excellent. Fifty-eight minutes. That's perfect. A line podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning into that conversation. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. There's some ways that you can support this podcast. One of which you can pick up an Align band, which is a heavy-duty resistance band. It comes along with a door anchor and a carrying case, and a video guide on how to mobilize those joints and integrate that body of yours. Really great stuff. You can be found at AlignTherapy.com and also on Amazon.com. Um, thank you also so much for utilizing the Amazon affiliate link on the right hand sidebar of the podcast page. Bookmark that thing. Anytime you purchase some crap on Amazon, purchase that crap through that link. We get a percentage of it costs you nothing. And I think that's enough. Thank you guys so much for reviews on iTunes. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Pow.